Patrick Harrington is the founder and owner of Kindness Yoga, a donation-based collection of studios that hosts thousands of yoga students annually. He and his family now live in Nosara, Costa Rica, and frequently travel back to Denver, Colorado to lead workshops and tend their yoga studios there. Right now, I'm living in Nosara, Costa Rica, and that's the majority of the time, and then coming back and forth between Denver, Colorado, and there. The beach comes to mind first. Uh, if you've not been to Nosara, it's, uh, it's an incredible beach. They have uh, a maritime zone, so there's no building on the beach. So unlike a lot of tropical places where you'll go and you'll see palapas on the beach or bars and restaurants on the beach, it's really uh, vegetated and wild. And so um, my wife and I, we love that. And uh, in addition to it, it's an incredible surf beach, really one of the top beginner and intermediate surf surf breaks in Costa Rica and Central America and I can remember one of the first times being there was in 2009 and my wife and I were out for sunset and it was just loaded with families, kids and uh, you know parents drinking wine or having a beer and kids running around playing in the surf, surfers out there and just um, the whole uh, demographic of people was so varied and everybody catching the ceremony and ritual of the sunset. So that, that's the biggest draw to that area is it's an incredible beach. Um, I think secondarily, it has enough creature comforts for me. My wife and I um, pride ourselves on eating out probably four or five nights a week. And, uh, and there's enough variation there to keep us uh, curious and interested and the quality is really high. So that, that means a lot to us, that there's some creature comforts. And when I say creature comforts in that sense, uh, eating out is one of ours. So that's big. Third on the list, it's not as accessible as some other places. It ta you, you have to be willing to drive on bumpy, dusty dirt roads for two and a half hours in one direction, maybe three, three and a half hours in another direction from the airport in Liberia. And that means that uh, you seem to get a particular type of person that's willing to do that and uh, that, that wants to go to that off, off the beaten path a little bit and, and be in a real um, community that prioritizes the environment and uh, water sports and yoga. There's three main beach sections in the Nosara area. And, and just to say, Nosara is actually the town, and kind of Playa Guiones is, is the area that we're mostly talking about. Nosara is a little bit more inland. So there's uh, Playa Palada, which is the furthest south from um, Playa Guiones. And that's a really sweet beach, um, a lot less populated by expats. It's a much more of a locals beach. It has, it's the only beach that has a restaurant on it that is um, right up against the water. So it's the only place really in the area where you can sit and have a drink at an established um, restaurant for sunset. So that, that has a, a real appeal and, and we try to go out there every couple of weeks for that. But it's, it's a, it can be a nice swimming area, but uh, not a great surfing area. And then you have the main <clears throat> Playa Guiones uh, surfer beach, it's often referred to, which will be the main road, and it kind of, if you just follow it all the way down through Playa Guiones, you'll, you'll run into it. And that's where we had our experience on the beach, looking at sunset, and it's the main area where people go out with their boards and um, catch waves, and it's, it's the most populated area, and uh, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, they have a, a great um, tree planting, program in the area and so that's an area that they're really concentrating on so they will plant anywhere from 150 to 200 trees every weekend and uh, you can just see that area growing um, back to its more natural state and then uh, further north um, is K section is kind of the the neighborhood as it's been delineated up there and it's a less 
popular uh, beach with with the, the younger people in the crowds. And so you can have a, a much more solitary experience up there. There's some great um, wading pools, natural kind of coral and rock formations that when the tide is out, we love to go there with our kiddos and it provides just a really protected area to be in you know, anywhere from chest high to, to um, ankle deep. And uh, you, know, you see some fish in there every once in a while, but it's, it's sweet, it's, it's a, a more solitary spot. How I generate income in Costa Rica is uh, kind of a moving target right now. In general, um, the way that we support ourselves there is through our businesses, Kindness Yoga here in Denver, Colorado. And um, being able to um, operate my role more remotely as, it's, as it stands right now. And when we first came down there, we uh, came down under the desire to purchase a business. And so we've gone through that process and, and decided not to do that. So now, um, kind of a, that is a jump off point from not deciding to do the business, leading workshops, um, teaching and teacher trainings and teaching public classes, yoga classes, are a way that we can earn income directly from the area itself. Um, so for us, it's really a combination. My wife uh, has a, a internet business that she works on. And so uh, she doesn't have to be in any one particular place for that to work. So it's kind of a potpourri of different ways that we can bring things in. Um, I also have private coaching clients that I work with, um, and that can be done on Skype. So uh, yeah, we found that um, unlike being in a big metropolitan area like Denver, where um, I might do one thing uh, down there, we get to have our hands in a lot of different things and keep it varied, and it's really been, really been fun. I think that there is a ton of opportunity in any market where there's, uh, you know, a distinct level of infrastructure. I don't really like the term third world, um, but the fact of the matter is, is that there's a lot that we have in the United States that they don't have there, and uh, that's could be argued to be a good thing or not or not. But certainly um, in the areas of real estate. There's um, uh, Nosara area is a very popular area with expats, and so f whether it be that you want to purchase real estate to have as a rental and spend a week or two there each year, kind of as your vacation spot, or um, to move down and purchase uh, a home for yourself uh, as an investment and keep things going here um, and kind of diversify where you have your money, uh, I think that there's a lot of um, uh, intelligence in really taking some of your wealth and putting it into a different country's marketplace. So um, real estate is a, is a major way that people um, subsist down there and thrive. Um, additionally, uh, there's so many expats that are down there that restaurant opportunities are there. If you're a restaurateur, um, bringing a quality concept to that area it would be much appreciated and we'd be we'd be one of your customers <laughs> so uh, for restaurant tours that'd be great and then obviously you can go down there and run any kind of internet business um, from there super easily and and live in paradise and uh, and then as far as uh, other folks that are doing any kind of educational things or obviously yoga or experiential activities, it's a beautiful place to bring people out of their trigger zones. And that's really what we focus on is take you out of where you live normally, out of your triggers, and bring you to a place and expose you to a way of thinking, a way of moving, a way of being that um, shifts who you are and hopefully in a fundamental way so that when you come back into your life, you uh, benefit and your life really benefits. Number one, it's, it's, a, it's a system reset. Just, uh, you know how you feel when you are, uh, after you've purchased a ticket to go somewhere? It's like the vacation starts a little bit. And um, when you sign up for a workshop or an intentional vacation, it's even amplified because you know that you're going to go somewhere and not only be uh, likely in a beautiful place, but you're going to go somewhere where you'll be inspired, where you'll be asked to think in a distinct way, um, to move in a distinct way, and really work on yourself. And so when you get out of your environment and go somewhere else, it causes your brain 
to become more receptive. You're not seeing the same pattern that you have when you drive to work every single day and it allows you to kind of have that journey that you might go on and not really be present. When you're in a new environment, when you're in a place with a new language, um, you're more present, you're there. And therefore, when you're present, you're more open to learn, you're more open to listen, you're open, more open to, to check in with yourself and how you're feeling and sometimes even feel like it's a little bit of a risk. You know, for some folks going to a place where there's only dirt roads that are not in great condition and you're bouncing around, you know, some folks that live in the city, that, that's a, a real distinct environment. So all of those factors um, that have to do with actually transporting yourself to another place are a major uh, augmentation around learning. And, uh, and then there's the sun and there's the water and being outside and hearing birds and hearing uh, wildlife. You're less insulated in a tropical environment. So for example, our main floor of our home doesn't have any windows that close. And so you are, you are in nature. There are, when you go downstairs at night, you see lizards, you see geckos, there are bugs everywhere. And all of those things get you out of your comfort zone which is what uh, education often does in a, in a transformational way um, around yoga and meditation. So um, the, the lack of insulation is one of the magic things about going to uh, a tropical place like Costa Rica. And in particular, in particular one that isn't, is, is less developed with a lot of the creature comforts down to the way that you travel around. Uh, so those are some of my favorites, yeah. These premium videos are available on Amazon Prime. The links are in the description below. We live in an area of uh, Playa Guiones called the K section. And uh, it's on top of a, the crest of a hill. And it's a two floor uh, building. And so we get to see above the whole canopy of the jungle and out to the ocean. And uh, that is a magical experience, to have the, the green and the sky and the blue all together and with the sunset is, is it's become a, a regular ritual of ours to watch the sunset. And I don't know um, how many of you watch the sunset on a daily basis, but I can tell you I didn't. I, I barely pay attention to when it's going down in Denver here. I'm, I'm usually going to and from somewhere or, it's just not on my mind. But um, in this environment, the natural cycles make a difference. And so um, I make it a point to watch the sunset. And, it's, and that means that I'm pausing and taking a breath. And usually I'm doing it with my family, which is an amazing ritual, an amazing, powerful thing to give. So we love being up high in the area that we're in so that, for that reason, so that we can see the sunset, whether we're at the beach or, or at home. And uh, surrounding us is so many um, varieties of trees and vines and fruits and sounds. Um, the, the birds are incredible. The insects are incredible. The cicadas will come on like an ocean, just drowning out all the noise. And then all at once, by magic, they stop. And it's just silent. And then the, you can hear the birds behind the silence. Um, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful place for wildlife. We have, uh, our, our living room is right next to a mango tree. And mangoes are a particular favorite of the monkeys that live in the area. And so about once a week, we have the family, one troop of monkeys that is in the tree next to us while we're eating lunch. And uh, you see the babies, they're riding on the mother's backs. You see the alphas and it's just, uh, it's just amazing to be around uh, wild animals. Um, you know, we don't get that in the city at all. All the dogs have to be on leashes, you know, for example. So being around animals that are not um, domesticated in any way is so cool. They wake us up in the morning. The howler monkeys is what they're called. They howl and it sounds like a dinosaur is outside. And if you can see one, it's a little monkey, like that big, that is making a sound that reverberates across the jungle. So it's, it's an amazing way of waking up, and that's, that's at sunrise or just before. And so you're waking up at sunrise, and um, so that's really, really cool. And one of the things I want to mention about time in Costa Rica is that 
Sunset is always between 6 and 6.30 p.m. throughout the entire year. It never changes. So you don't have sunshine, for example, like you do in Denver until 9 o'clock at night sometimes. It is always 6 to 6.30, and the sun rises always 4.30 to 5. And so you can really set your life up by the natural rhythms of the rising and setting of the sun, which is something that I've <clears throat> never done before. But we're, we're up at daybreak, and to hear the jungle come alive all around you is, is magical. Um, and lastly, uh, there's, some, there's some great lizards in our world, and one in particular uh, we named Fred, after my wife's father, Frederick. And uh, they have their rituals. So um, you can be sitting out on our porch, kind of where, the, where we eat, and at a certain time every day, Fred leaves and goes across his path and goes down into the ground. And then at a certain time in the evening, Fred comes back, and it is clockwork. He doesn't wear a watch, so I'm not sure how he does it. But uh, the, the animals and the wildlife is amazing there. As someone who's grown up in Denver and lived here in Denver the majority of my life, um, the decision to move down south was a major one. Uh, this is my home, this is where my businesses are, and this is the rhythm of life that I'm really used to. And my you know, schools are here for my kids, and um, my community, my parents are here. And so it was important to me to be in a place where I was able to go back and forth with a, quite a lot of ease. And so what I've found from being down and living in Costa Rica and then coming home here to Colorado is that there's a major contrast that I experience and I love the contrast. The distinction of being down in a natural, um, what I refer to as uninsulated environment like Costa Rica, in the jungle, going and being in the ocean on a regular basis, seeing and being with the rhythms of the sunset and sunrise, hearing animals that are not domesticated, uh, not my animals, making a lot of noise right outside of my house, makes a real psychological shift. There's a lot of research that's coming out right now around grounding, just getting your feet on the earth. You know, I don't wear shoes there. I, Cameron and I, my wife, we, we uh, play with how long we can go and where we can go without shoes down there. And luckily, you can go to every single restaurant that we have in town without shoes on, and you don't have to wear a shirt if you don't want to. So um, the, the distinction in, in rules around how you act on a day-to-day -day basis is really different in, in a country um, in Central America and certainly in Nosara. And then I come back here and immediately I'm back in this pace. It's like I step off of the, the, the slow-moving track at the airport and all of a sudden I'm, boom, on a freeway and going. And it's, uh, I love that. I, I recognize that there's a comfort in my body from practicing it over so many years that moving quickly feels like home in some senses. And, um, you know, having a full calendar of, you know, meetings and people that I'm going to go and see and having all of the convenience of, of going to our natural grocery store here and having, you know, more choices than I, I just couldn't believe how many choices are there because you don't have as many choices in um, Costa Rica. And, I, I like that. I also I like have, I like being limited. I like that the um, you know salad dressing section has like four salad dressings. That's refreshing to me. So um, really having a life where you get it all, having something where that you, whether it be your family or whether it be a business or um, what have you that brings you back to the United States or, or wherever you're coming from. Um, back to that rhythm, it's like you get to step back in and, and say, wow, I've changed. This environment kept going at this pace that is, in a lot of opinions, stressful and maybe not as healthy, maybe a lifestyle that wasn't as healthy. And because I don't have access to that level of speed and convenience down where I was, when I step back into this, I recognize that I can see how I'm different. And that's impactful. And to recognize that the place that you live has a lot to do with how you be, how healthy you are, um, what you focus on, the rhythm that you go at, 
how often and how much you spend with your time with your family. Those are major factors that I notice as soon as I come to Denver, man, it's goodbye in the morning and hello at night. In Costa Rica, I am in and out of, of seeing them all day long. My work is, you know, a meeting on, on the phone for 30 minutes or an hour or a Skype call, and then it's back and we're, we're in the same place again. So I love and, and really encourage that shift where it's possible so that people can have the contrast of how they've been living maybe for many, many years in maybe not the healthiest ways, and then go to a place to where you know, health is more emphasized simply because the number of choices and convenience to be unhealthy isn't as available. And the speed at which you live isn't, if you were going that fast, people would look at you like you're crazy. It's just, you know, things go slower. And that's, that's a good thing. If you're thinking about opening a business or purchasing a business or going into real estate in Costa Rica, one of the things that I was, um, really new to me um, is how the role of lawyers in that whole process. In Costa Rica, lawyers play a much expanded role compared to my experience of, of using lawyers in business and real estate here in the States. So in Costa Rica, you'll use a, a lawyer to get your driver's license. You'll use your lawyer to do a lot of the due diligence or uh, fact-finding that you would uh, normally do yourself to try and save a little bit of money. Uh, the lawyer takes that on as part of their um, kind of backgrounding of whatever project that you're into. Any filing of paperwork, official paperwork, it all goes through your lawyer. So your lawyer has, um, in my experience of it, a lower fees, but much, m much more active involvement. So you're, you're paying for more things, but at the same time, I found that to be really um, helpful. I liked having somebody more holding my hand through some of the more day-to-day um, -day type of things that I might be doing here that I'm really comfortable with. Um, I speak Spanish, but I could see if you didn't speak Spanish, it being really unsettling not to know uh, the language and when you're filing things and asking questions. And so having a lawyer that is not only um, can speak English, but is really comfortable with the command of, of the English language. And so for us, um, we went through our particular real estate agent down there, and he is an American who has spent 15 years in Nosara. His name is Bram Shook, and uh, he's Century 21 down there. If anyone wants to look him up, he's a great guy. But he has a 15-year relationship with his lawyer. And so either you have some intermediary there that speaks Spanish and English really well, and just know that they're going to be doing a lot more for you than you may be used to. <clears throat> as far as uh, the visa situation in um, Costa Rica, you have to leave the country every 90 days if you're not a re resident. Uh, the way that you get residency is that you invest more than I think it's 225000 or two fifty, right in that range. Um, and once you invest that much, then you get a residency. And you can also start your residency without cause, other than that you want to live there. You just start the process. And again, all of that goes through a lawyer. And you want to, you want to plan on a year of time for that just regular process of residency to occur. Um, and opening a business down there, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's, uh, they have you know, similar versions of documents that are there. Taxes are a little bit different. It's pretty much a flat 25% business tax for operating. One of the things in real estate that is really interesting is that there is no MLS. There is no central aggregating system for real estate. Everyone is on the honor system for when you purchase a property to report how much they paid for the property. So as I understand it, 15, 20 years ago, people might pay $100,000 for a property and report for tax purposes that they paid 10. And so it's on the honor system, and then the honor system determines how much property tax you pay. So it's, it leans towards not telling the truth for certain people. And I can remember um, when we were down there and we were looking at purchasing this building, which includes land and real estate, 
When they told me that I could say however much I wanted to, this particular property we were looking at was going to end up being around $4 million altogether, I said, well, we're reporting the full amount. You know, we're not going to come down to this country, make money in their backyard, and then not give them the taxes. And my partners at the time were like, well, let's, let's think about this. You know, let's think about what we're doing. And so we started to, to look around and ask around about how, ta how well is tax revenue used in this area? Do, do, do they feel like the government does a good job? And throughout the process of conversation, you know, what we determined that felt good for us was that we would declare 50 percent and then we would take what would be the cash value of the other 50 percent and invest it locally into a project that we found to be uh, worthy in the area where we were investing our money and time directly into some kind of a public, uh, public way or public benefit. And so that was a neat way of, of using what, in my opinion, is, is probably not the most effective way for Costa Rica to, to take the next step. However, it is a good way of ensuring that the tax revenue that we are going to declare goes to, a, goes to the area where we're really going to be working um, and focusing our energy. So without having a central aggregating place for real estate data, no one really knows what anyone paid previously or what anyone is paying currently. So trying to find out, am I getting a good price on this particular house based on other comps in the area, which we take for granted here in the, in the United States, you don't know. And in fact, it's cultural, not really great to even be asking. And so it's a very, um, kind of based on your feeling, what is it worth to you? Because you honestly don't have a way, unless the real estate agent that you're using sold the property or sold in that area and is willing to tell you honestly how much something would cost, you don't know. And so that's a big one because so much of the ways that we use to um, create and understand value is based on how much somebody else paid for something. And in this particular case, you get to decide and determine and look critically at what value does this have for me? And uh, most of us aren't very practiced at that. And um, as a side note, you know, Kindness Yoga, we're donation-based uh, studio and we became donation based July 4th, 2004. And when we first became donation based, we lost maybe 25% of our clientele because the conversation at that time was much more rudimentary. When people would come in, we'd say, What would you like to pay for class? with no baseline. And people would stand there like a deer in headlights. And it was uncomfortable for folks to try and determine the value of a yoga class. Well, you transport that to the conversation about a house or a couple acres of land near the beach. It's a totally new world to be able to uh, actually determine for yourself the value of something, not based on how much somebody else paid next door. So that could be fun and daunting, mm -hmm. for sure. I think it's important to uh, establish it through relationship that there, for example, in Nosara, there are several lawyers that are based in Nosara. And um, I would interview them. You know, I would, I would go and speak to them personally. I would, I would uh, make sure that unless your Spanish is very strong, that they are comfortable and that you're comfortable with their skills in English. And use your, your intuition more than you might in other places to just notice how you feel in your body when you're in this person's presence. Do you trust them? And, um, you know, ask to talk to other folks that they've worked with that are Americans or that come from the place that you come from. And, and talk to those people. How was their experience? Um, because we've, we've met lawyers and had interactions with lawyers that were on the other side of the dealing that um, I would not want to have representing me. And the particular person that we um, used is great and feel like he did represent, although you know, it, it's funny because on our first meeting he pulled out a bottle of tequila and we all had shots together and that was kind of his tradition of starting off and you know you're not going to find that level of looseness necessarily 
here until uh, after you win a case maybe. Um, but down there, that's the way we started off and, and that really worked for me and my partners and he's kind of a get down and dirty lawyer and that really worked for us. But uh, the main thing is don't, I, I encourage you not to stop with the first person you meet, but um, meet a couple. Please visit our best travel gear page on the livingoverseas.tv website. The link is in the description below. When you buy through our link, we may receive a small affiliate commission. There is no added cost for you and it helps support our channel so that we can keep bringing you free videos. The cost of living in Costa Rica is, uh, the first word that comes to my mind is real. It's, it's, uh, it's not cheap. I, um, I find it to be comparable to the states, quite frankly. Now we are living in what's considered to be the wealthiest area in Central America, this little section of Playa Guiones. It's, um, there are many folks that have lots of money that choose to live there. And so the prices are American prices. Um, whether it be going out to dinner, we're, we're spending, you know, without alcohol, 40 to $50 a meal for two of us and our kids that split a meal. So to figure a meal for three out, 40, 50 bucks, and then you add alcohol, which is similar prices to here. So um, you, I, don't, I don't think of Costa Rica as a place where you go to save money compared to the United States. Certainly, if you go to less developed areas, um, smaller towns, more inland, then you're going to find different prices, less prices. Um, rent, purchasing a home, those kind of things. You're paying medium price in Guiones, you know, you're in the two to three hundred thousand starter home in that area if you're going to be walkable distance to the beach. Uh, interestingly, we went to one of the bigger cities in the area, Nicoya, and into one of the markets and there was a, a sign with the cost for tortillas and after I talked with the woman for a little while and, and asked her her favorite recipes and stuff like that in Spanish, um, I said, well, we're going to buy some tortillas and I gave her the full amount that was posted and she gave me back half and she said, you get the locals price. So know that there is uh, a local economy and there is an extranjero economy or a tourist uh, economy. And that, you know, it's better to be okay with that because uh, the folks are living at a different level uh, and standard of living than chances are than you are if you're moving down from the States. But um, yeah, yeah I, I wish it were less. <laughs> The cost of living, while it may be the same or, or similar to what you're used to in the States, the what you get is uh, living in a natural environment. And I feel like most of the places in the United States that we live in that are natural, beautiful places, uh, unless they're state parks, they've become little cities. They've become tourist attractions. Um, you know, you go, to, you go to Red Rocks Amphitheater here in Colorado any morning and the parking lot is full. There are people going all up and down it. My mom went there the other day with her bird watching club. They were told, we don't allow bird watching here at Red Rocks anymore because of the number of people that are coming to the park. They were shocked. This is a place they've been coming for, you know, lifetimes. So as we commoditize our, our nature here in the United States, and it's more and more popular, and I'm not knocking that at all, um, what you get down there is still raw, raw experience of being in a jungle, of being on an untamed beach, and um, being out of the hustle and bustle that's your daily life. So it's totally worth it, and it's totally going to cost you about the same. In Nosara, we're blessed. There are two really great um, expat school options. It's one of the reasons why the area is so popular with folks that uh, can afford it or can afford to um, do, their, do their life, um, retire there or do their life there, is uh, Del Mar Academy is a Montessori school um, through fifth grade and then in fifth grade it starts to shift over to um, International Baccalaureate program and so you graduate there as if you were graduating from a top private school here in the United States. Um, in comparison, the cost to send a child there is much more affordable than a top 
Montessori or International Baccalaureate School here in the States. So um, you get a very high level education. It looks like a it looks like a a Western campus in the middle of the jungle. So it's a it's a run by some very committed expat locals who wanted a place for their children, and so they started a school. It has about 150, 140, 150 kids, um, and it's great, and it goes all the way through high school. The other one is called Casa de las Estrellas, and that's a Waldorf school, and that is where we're sending our child this year. It's all in Spanish. It's 20 feet from the beach. It's in uh, the bottom of a jungle ravine, and um, the classrooms are wooden structures with no windows, composting toilets, and huge trees growing right through the middle of them. And so your, your kid is in the jungle, and everything is wooden and beautiful, and we were, we were really blown away by the natural environment, and it's gonna be unlike almost anywhere that you could send your kid in the United States that we've seen. And, uh, and the price is super affordable. Um, yeah, we, we love the area for schools. If you're a parent and you can take a year um, to put your child in a place that is unlike anywhere else, those two schools will give you an amazing contrast and I highly suggest it. Doing yoga in paradise. Oh, it is, um, it's amazing, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, imagining being in Warrior Two and looking over my, my fingertips and looking out through the canopy of the jungle and seeing green everywhere you look, flowers and being bathed in the oxygen that the jungle gives while the natural sounds are there, also having you know the piped in sounds of a good soundtrack. And, um, the humidity and it may be pouring rain. I've been in so many classes where it's a torrential downpour, there's no walls, and you're doing your practice. It's unlike anything that the majority of yogis get to experience because we're in controlled environments so often. And therefore, that, that taking away the insulation of city life is so powerful. You are... Um, you're in the picture. Um, Zen, and the Art of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance does a, a great part on um, why a motorcycle versus a car, and he's describing it to his kid, and he's saying that when you're in the car, it's like you're looking at a picture. You're, the window's closed, and you're looking out, and you see a beautiful scene, but you can't touch it. You can't be with it. You're just watching it go by, and you are in your place, and it is over there. When you're on a motorcycle, you are in the scene. You are feeling the breeze. You are feeling the temperature. You are uninsulated with the uh, environment. And it's the same with doing yoga in the jungle. You're not looking out a window. You don't get to turn up or down the temperature or the humidity. And it's, it's a magical thing, especially in the practice of yoga where, you know, so much of what we talk about is, is letting go and let be and let it. And in that situation, you don't have a choice. So it's really, really augments your ability to do that and to feel it. Finally, I'd, I'd just like to say to anybody that's considering making a lifestyle choice, like living in another country, uh, maybe it sounds scary, maybe it sounds risky, I encourage you to go for it and to take bold action. For my wife and I, back in November of 2015, we made a commitment to each other that December 2016, December 29th particularly, we would be getting on a plane to go and live somewhere else for a year. And we started meditating every day and sharing our visions that we had in our meditation and, and getting more and more synced up on that. And it happened so much faster than December 2016 for us because we were meditating, because we were caring, because we were putting energy into it. The perfect opportunity came up for us. And was it the perfect timing? No. But I don't think you're always going to get those things where it's the perfect timing, the perfect opportunity, the perfect this and that. It wasn't all perfect, but it was close enough for us and we went for it. And inside of that commitment to go for it, providence moved with us. 
and things that we couldn't have predicted occurred to make it just an incredible experience. And so I encourage you to commit decisively. And from that commitment, forces will come to your aid that could not come to your aid without that commitment. You'll see. Take that step, make that commitment, and enjoy the ride. For more travel tips and guides, cost of living videos, and real estate tours, please subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. For more information, please visit www.livingoverseas.tv.